as I sit down and look at what I have going through and looking at all the projects I have lined up, I kind of forgotten about this one. This is a video that I had planned back in December of 2022, and I wanted to get it out around January, but it never happened. So one year later, let's take a look at this video and let's talk about wind-ups. Many years ago, the game was slower than it was today. Certain cards like Maxi and Ultimate Offering were still legal for tournament play, and if you read this title, you already know what this video is about. We are going to be tackling the history of a lot of people's most hated or beloved deck, Windups. So let's wind back the clock and take a look at how they started and see where they are today. So before we get into this video, this was a script that was, again, made in 2022 of December. And I'm going to go loosely off of what I have, but let's get right into it. Windups are a deck that was re released in 2011, and this was in Generation 4. This set had so many interesting concepts, but windups were one of the more prevalent ones that would get support over the next few sets to make them meta relevant. They are a group of toy like monsters that have the ability to wind up their effect by performing special summons and other actions. Now, wind up, the term, quote unquote, was a fan made term because they're, after you use their effects, they're considered wound up and you can't use them again until you summon a new copy. And this deck grew quickly and gained popularity among players for its versatilities and abilities for combo potential and even lockdown potential. In the following years, additional wind-up cards were released in various expansion packs, or various packs, being Photon, Shockwave, and Order of Chaos. One of the key cards that was released later on from the actual main core of the deck was the TCG exclusive Wind-Up Shark. It is a level 4 monster that has the ability to special summon itself from the hand when a wind-up monster is summoned to your field. This ability allowed players to easily set up powerful combos and quickly flood the field with actual toy monsters. In addition to their versatility, windups have a unique and whimsical design featuring clockwork mechanics and gears. This distinct aesthetic helped the archetype to stand out and become one of the fan favorites among Yu-Gi-Oh! Overall, the windup archetype has played a significant role in the Yu-Gi-Oh! trading card game, offering your players a powerful and unique toolkit for constructing their deck. One of the things about Windup is that players actually grew to hate this deck as time went on. From the Windup Handlip to the Wind Up Shock Lock, it had a versatility of no other deck around it outside of its competitors like Insectors. And this deck may be full of amazing and cute little toys, but some of these toys can be deadly if they're put in the right combination. The core cast of the deck were Windup Magician, Hunter, Rabbit, Shark, and Factory, and one of the most powerful of them all, which is still locked up in its chains on the forbidden section of the ban list, Windup Carrier Zenmati. These make up the most essential pieces of the deck, with support that came from Extreme Victories, Tour Guide from the Underworld that you can summon off of it another Tour Guide, or you can summon a Sangan off the Tour Guide for a easy access to wind up carriers and matey. And in a moment's notice, you can go from instantly summoning out a matey to either hand ripping your opponent or summoning out a shock master with the greatest of ease. Now lastly, we're gonna be covering how the effects work. All wind up monsters have an effect that you can wind up once per turn per copy, except wind up honeybee and shark. Once their effects are used, they become wound up and it has been identified as players that that is the common sling that they're going to be using. This deck was able to crank out rank 3s to 5s super easily and super fast. Some of the notable ones at the time were number 17 Leviathan Dragon to give it a 500 attack boost, Levier the Sea Dragon to summon back a banished level 4 or lower monster that could help in your combos, Tyrus and Aedrius, they were the most shocking of all, 
for the rank 5 pool because of the destruction that they had in their effects. And the final card that players actually grew to hate being number 16, Shockmaster. Being able to summon out Shockmaster turn 1 and being able to call a monster spell or trap card was very powerful because it either told your opponent, no you cannot play the monster effects that you have in your hand, or two on the field, or three in the graveyard. Number two, or number four, would be no spell cards at all, or number five being no traps. So realistically, if you had a Shockmaster set up already and they had nothing to combat it with, you pretty much just go call monsters on your turn, your opponent goes, they can set whatever they want, and then your turn you can call traps, combo off, and essentially win the game from there. With the initial wave of support from Generation Force done and over with, we're going to be looking at the next set being Photon Shockwave. This is when the deck got cards like Wind Up Hunter, Wind Up Kitten, Wind Up Rabbit, and Wind Up Zenmate gave more options to the deck to summon off the Zenmate, like the Wind Up Rabbit, that could help trigger your Wind Up Magician. And after that, we had the Order of Chaos support that gave us cards like Wind Up Shark that bolstered the actual strategy into a more dominant play for a deck. Now, before we ever got Shark, the deck was still pretty good for what it was. But once we got Shark, after that, that's when it became a actual meta threat back in 2012. At this rate, there was two different versions that you could play, being the wind-up hand loop or the wind-up shock lock. Being able to hand loop your opponent for five in the opening turn if you could, but most of the time you're looping three cards out of your opponent's hand, so they only have a two-card starting hand. Three during the draw phase. And then the shock lock variant, being able to call monster spells or traps, depending on what time of the turn it is. So if you're going first, you're most of the time going to be activating the monster effect at the end of your combo, so your opponent cannot activate any of their monster effects. And then once it's set up, you can just go and activate the effect to call traps, and that shuts off all traps your opponent has, so you can OTK them with ease. And this was super intense back 10 years ago. Well, now it is 12 years ago, as of recording this video, it was relatively new outside of a few decks like Disaster Dragon and Agents. So now that we mentioned both of the variants of the deck, I want to take the little time to go to the Konami blog post back in February of 2012 that they actually highlighted this combo and it gave us hindsight on how to do the hand rip combo that could rip up to three to five cards depending on what your starting hand is but it also was in depth with that and also gave us a guide on what cards can combat it like effect veiler vanity's emptiness and everyone's favorite little bug maxi this combo was so brutal that konami was forced to hit key pieces like wind up magician and wind up carriers and mighty to lower the consistency of the deck a little, but that didn't stop the wind-up shock lock variant of the deck. Everything came to an end, though, as wind-up carrier Zen Mady was placed onto the Forbidden Unlimited list on September 1st, 2012, and was later banned on the next Forbidden Unlimited list on March 1st, 2013, labeling it as the first Exceed monster, Limited, and Forbidden. This card has been banned for 12 years, almost, and it has made a huge impact on the community as the toys that could. Back then, it was very strange of a deck, but nowadays we look at it f with fond memories. And honestly, where could we see windups headed in the future? Over the course of the 12 years that windup has been out. They have gotten legacy support in Zen Mayday in Secrets of Eternity and wind up Zen Maintenance in Flames of Destruction. Zen Maintenance is a wonderful card for the strategy since it adds a wind up card from your deck to your hand while banishing a face up wind up monster you control to special summon another from your deck with the same name so it can help with getting another wind up rat or shark when you need. 
But the downside is it banishes the card face down, so it cannot be recycled. One day I do hope that Windup Carrier does get released from the Forbidden Limited list to one or maybe three, but that can cause problems in the format as if it goes in their favor. But with the current state of the game with hand traps and how much it has sped up, it will take a lot for windups to actually push forward into the metagame and into the forefront again. Realistically, windups are one of those decks that have a lot of nostalgia towards it, a, a deck that people love, but then there's also the other side of the deck that people hated because of what it did. Now, overall, with this history, this short little history of the deck, I do have to say that I feel like 100% Zen Mady can come off the list. It's kind of like Orcus Harp Horror, but we have more cards that can go into it, being Speed Ray Terra Top, and people realizing that Junk Forward is a really good card in certain decks. And if you look at Zen Mady, if we do get that back, possibly MX Saber Invoker could follow suit in the future. Because both of those cards kind of realistically do the same thing. One summons out wind up monsters, and the only and the other one summons out Earth, be Beast Warriors, and Warriors from the deck. So that is going to be a question posed to you all. Do you think Wind Up Carries and Mady can come back? And tell me why you think it should or shouldn't down in the comments below. But anyways, I've been Bolt Spider. See you guys in the next video, and goodbye.